Hello everybody, this is Yakamoth, and you will be listening to the commentary that I recorded in just a moment. But before we get to that, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, that is Xbox Game Pass for PC. And you can get, well, the Xbox Game Pass right now if you'd like to. And also download Battletoads if you'd like to play it right now as well. The first month, I believe, is $1, and any subsequent month is $4.99. And it has over 100 good games, also upcoming uh, good release titles such as the Halo game or Wasteland 3. And, well, this is going to be a commentary on the fastest speedrun that I have completed currently, which is the 100% easy category for this game. It was done within, well three days basically I have invested like 15 12 to 15 hours per day in order to hopefully well complete this to the satisfaction I would also like to point out that I am basically well I was hired sponsored to participate in the speedrun competition and yeah I would like to say thank you to that Xbox Game Pass for PC is Really intriguing, I will probably check it out myself. And if you'd like to learn more, make sure to check out the description where you can find a link in order to check that out. Now to maybe just kind of get that ahead as well. The Battle Toads are back, available to August 20th. Rash Sits and Pimple are returning at last to smash hit their way through the all new action packed adventure of choreographed chaos. And Couch co may never be the same again. So yeah, um. I really enjoyed this game. I hope you do too. And yeah. Also, by the way, future or past Yagamoth didn't realize that I should do this before I start the video, so I just recorded this now afterwards. Have fun. Alrighty. This is a post commentary on the Battletoads run, Battletoads 2020, on the easy difficulty that is Tadpole. And, well, this is post-commentary because I feel like I can do better commentary than I did live because I did not know when I would get a good run and I feel like this run was pretty decent in the end. So, we choose Pimple here at the beginning because his charge attack decides, uh, well, just knocks out enemies in one shot for the most part and you can cancel the charge attacks without having the humongous after delay by going ahead and just doing a dash afterwards or a tongue attack depending on what is necessary or useful at the time. So worth noting that my PC unfortunately couldn't handle the uh, capturing while streaming at the same time setup. So I'm just kind of doing this kind of post commentary here without any well real sounds. Otherwise you would kind of hear me twice while I'm doing the run live as well as on the other end. So I hope this is quite acceptable. Now, um, these cutscenes here that are, that are in engine basically, from what I can tell, you cannot actually skip them in any capacity. They are just set, so to speak. So not much we can do about that. So we just, well, go ahead and watch these at this point. Um, also worth noting, this was, or, yeah, was sponsored by uh, Xbox Xbox Game Pass for P PC, and while well, you, c I'm gonna get to the gameplay in just a second. Um, while we get here, actually, I'm going to tell you more about it in just a moment because the second stage is gonna be an auto scroller where there's not a whole lot to say. So let's focus on the gameplay here. So what I'm doing here is basically I'm holding the charge button which charges up an attack and that is a heavy attack which knocks out most enemies. Uh, each of the three characters has different types of attacks, different charge attacks, different speeds. Uh, this guy is by far the slowest one overall in terms of uh, like just attack speed, but because we are cancel a large portion of it, it doesn't matter. Also, I figured out that if you use the taunt button in order to, well, display a taunt, so to speak, you actually deal more damage. I think it's not quite double damage, but it's more like 50% damage. Either way, taunting and then going for three charge attacks on this guy here is enough to take him out without any trouble. So, next up, uh, we also will have um, 
more enemies. So, worth noting, this is a 100% run, which means I have to make sure to pick up all these golden crystal thingies in the background here, for example, as well as I need to get at least an A rank in all of the combat encounters. Uh, for this first uh, section here, that is pretty easy to do. Um, I haven't exactly figured out the ranking system, to be completely honest. The best I can tell is that the ranking system is basically a mix of you don't want to get hit, keep the combat counter high and defeat the enemies quickly? Question mark. I'm actually really not entirely sure what goes into the combo system. Also this guy here, unfortunately he is at the left side of the screen, but from what I can tell his movement is random. So optimally you would just have him on the right side of the screen, so he leaves the screen faster as well as your character would be further to the right, so we can start running to the right a bit further. Don't forget the collectible. I actually have no idea what they are supposed to be. Then here, uh, we just keep charging attacking. It's a bit difficult to keep doing this. Also, these guys can block. If you if they are blocking, you have to use a charge attack in order to knock them out. So it would be better to just go for a charge attack straight up. However, sometimes that is really difficult to input. Worth noting, I'm playing this on mouse and keyboard because I'm just not used to an Xbox controller. Don't forget to use collectible. So this is kind of my comfort zone. I feel like for having only three days to route, in which it wasn't initially clear uh, which category we are supposed to run, I feel like I got a pretty decent run done. However, this run certainly could be a fair bit faster if somebody was interested in trying to improve this. I would say it can be at least like 5 to 10, maybe even 15 minutes quicker if you try to really go for it. Either way, um... This was the boss, I think the purple guy, blue, teal, cyan, whatever, the blue guy-ish, the blue-ish guy takes actually more damage than the red one, and however he also charges into the wall. So enemies that charge into the walls and uh, have the little stars above their heads, they do take more damage, and you can try to take advantage of that, but sometimes that's just not exactly reasonable. This is also the entirety of the first stage, and the rest here is just going to be more cutscenes. So, um, let me check real quick whether we have, to, yeah, we have the highest quality here. Looked a little bit jittery, but that's just because I'm basically screen capturing for this doing, uh, to do post commentary here. So, now, um, worth noting that I guess this cutscene might be still in engine, but you can't skip this one, unfortunately. I say unfortunately, so here's the thing. I actually really enjoyed the cutscenes, like, more than I thought I would. Normally this is not exactly my type of humor, but it got me chuckling and laughing a few times anyways. Because, I don't know, it's just funky, I like it. Either way, um, we are going to go have a small intermediate section there where our toad friends are getting jobs. So, during these jobs you have to just do various button presses, and I have to admit I'm not entirely sure why the button presses do not entirely register. Sometimes they just work, sometimes they don't quite work. Maybe I'm pressing them too quick. For reference, I can push buttons 10 times a second, but I have to slow down even well below that. Because otherwise, whenever you see the red bar at the bottom, or the bar turn red, that is when I'm supposedly making a mistake. Either way, this is one of these things which I just didn't end up worrying about, because it would require more investigating to figure out these little things, figure out maybe it's a timing thing, maybe you just need to play alongside the animations of the characters rather than just mashing as quick as you can. Either way, um, this would require more investigating as well as I'd have to say a bit more time than three days to figure out all these things. Keep in mind because in this challenge we had to um, speedrun the game after receiving it, playing through it casually, and then just route it and run through the entire thing. So there's going to be a lot of things that can still be optimized. A lot of things that I largely actually account for just not having memorized everything. So for this last cutscene here, by the way, we can just mash the left, right button and mouse button as quick as you can, which is the only one of these cutscenes here. Or cutscenes? Well, I guess action events. So. Um, next up we come to the Turbo Tunnel. The Turbo Tunnel is a literal 8 minute auto scroller, and I wish it was implemented such that you would have one button 
Well, actually, one button to speed up, one button to maybe slow down. I think that would be amazing because, other than that, because I'm used to hard mode playing at this point. And this is easy. I was just like, well, I don't really get much to do. And you will actually see a result of me kind of spacing out a little bit, a little bit later in here. So yeah, um, yeah. for anybody who may not know speedrunning, it's the concept of completing a game with the fastest time possible by any means necessary. And any means necessary means you still fulfill the category requirement. The case of the category requirement here in this case is easy mode, as in tadpole difficulty, as well as 100%, which means all collectibles, well, all collectibles that they know about. And this means we need to go and pick up these things. Just don't miss them, because otherwise that would be a little bit awkward. So, um, what else? Oh yeah, let's actually get to the sponsor. So once again, as mentioned before, this is actually sponsored by Xbox Game Pass for PC. And I'm actually pretty happy that I got an opportunity like that. I have to admit, I've been and still am actually quite nervous about hopefully fulfilling all the requirements, one way or another, whatever that means. And yeah, uh, let's see. For anybody who may not know, Xbox Game Pass is on PC and currently, I think for the special promotion, $1 a month. However, it will be $4.99 a month later on. And you get access to brand new PC games, including upcoming new releases like Wasteland 3, Halo Infinite Plus, and there's a library of over 100 great games to play. I have to admit, I didn't really ex uh, take a look at it. I've been just focused on playing this game for the last three days. I think I have collectively invested like 12 to 15 hours per day in order to try and deliver a good product. So here we are. So also, let's see, the Battletoads are back, as you might be able to tell. Available August 20th, which is at this point four days ago. Well, it is 2.51 a.m. So technically it's three and two, oh, whatever. <laughs> Rash sits and Pimple are returning to the last smash hit their way through an all-action-packed adventure of choreographed chaos, and co Couch Cop may never be the same again. Honestly, this is one of these games that actually would really intrigue me to play this co-op, because I feel like this would be a lot of fun. Like, it just seems really intriguing on how they implemented everything. Now, let me get to the Turbo Tunnel real quick. If you'd like to get points in the Turbo Tunnel, go as close as possible to these uh, pillars, etc., whatever, in order to rack up points. Um, <laughs> I just test the sounds that uh, frogs make when you fall down the hole, because Pimple sometimes yells really loud, and I found that to be kind of funny. But again, um, this will have a consequence just upcoming, I think, soon, where I'm actually going to miss one of the crystal thingies. That is pretty much the biggest mistake I have in the run. Right there. Yeah, I missed it. This is pretty much the biggest mistake I have I made in the run. I think it's like 25 seconds lost. And it's just because <laughs> I'm trying to goof off and entertain myself during these outer scrolling parts where I don't really have anything else to do. So yeah, less than ideal. Either way, um, the Turbo Tunnel on hard mode is actually one of the more enjoyable challenges to me. It took me a while to get through it in my casual-ish playthrough. And I would lie that if I got it every single try once I started practicing it a little bit. But on easy mode, you have it very lenient. On hard mode, you do not get the timer that is on Zits right now, for example. Six, five. Zits, by the way, is one of the frogs. Well, toads, excuse me. And basically, once that countdown timer is back up, your toad is back. And also, they get replenished at every checkpoint. In hard mode, only on the checkpoints, you replenish your fallen toads. And it's significantly longer sections of driving without checkpoints in between, with a lot more obstacles. It's actually pretty fun. So, um, next up, worth noting, let me go over the toads real quick that we have. Um, I mainly use Pimple for the beat-em-up sections, because he has a charge attack that he's just strictly the guy that deals the most damage, and most of the enemies get knocked down in one hit which is pretty convenient if you're trying to go fast. So that is the brown frog in the center here, that is Pimple. Um, worth noting, then we have the sunglasses one, Rash. 
I actually don't use Rash in, at all at any capacity during this run. I'm sure there is some uses here and there in order to like optimize the run better with his moves one or way or another, but well, I just kind of decided to go with the most simple route that makes sense and delivers a good run initially because I kind of wanted to make sure I get a run done since routing a game is one thing, but actually getting a run done without any major mistake is another. So yeah, that is Rash on the left side of Sunglass. And then we have Zitz. Zitz is the positive leader of the trio, and he is the fastest one, deals the least damage with his individual attacks. Rash is kind of in the middle between the, th uh, the Pimple and Zitz in terms of damage output. And he actually is pretty useful in a number of circumstances, largely because his charge attack has effectively no uh, connected hitbox with um what i mean with this is when you use pimple's charge attack he turns into a train and just head charges forward and that is actually part of pimple's hitbox so if an enemy is electrocuting himself like in the next stage uh you cannot just charge into it without getting electrocuted yourself however sits can just straight up use the charge attack with his jet engines i guess and that will actually hit enemies that will largely come into play on the final boss rather than anything else. So yeah, we're nearing the end-ish area of the turbo tunnel. I think it's still like two minutes. Oh well. Fun fact on these sections here, you might initially think, oh, you don't want to go too far to the right, otherwise you bonk into the wall. No, you don't actually bonk into the walls. If you hold like full left here, it's perfectly fine. Or full right here, um, you do not, you can effectively just hug the wall and it is perfectly fine. Uh, what else? So yeah, I feel like the biggest challenge of routing this easy 100% has been getting all the A ranks or better for the brawling sections because that's pretty difficult since I didn't really have much of a clue on how to figure out how these brawling sections even properly work. Like, most of them, or most of these combats, if you just don't get hit and charge attack all the enemies down, you will get an A rank or better. However, in some of them I had to actually slow down a bit in order to get that done. Alrighty, um, we're getting to the end here. By the way, I just switch over to Zitz here, crash into the wall because that automatically selects Pimple, because why not? Might as well have a bit of fun. So this is where... Well, it goes to the next section. This is gonna be the brawling stage number two. And... I have no idea what the name of this stage is. But effectively, as long as you don't make any mistakes like I did, you will finish this level here with pretty much the same time every single time. And well, these 25 seconds might have cost me, just as a heads up in case you're following the entire competition. <laughs> Alrighty, let's see. Now, next up, we have... The Carnival, or the Carn Evil. Um, the short version about this here is, this is kind of where they start hiding the collectibles more and more in the environment, where you also have to start solving certain little puzzles in order to complete everything. So don't forget the collectible there. Sometimes the tongue thing, also I did not know you could not go behind the pillar there. <laughs> Sometimes the tongue doesn't actually want to work. So these are tank dogs. Basically, you have to wait until they attack, so they have the stars over their head, uh, in order to be able to hit them. So two charge attacks are good enough, and what you could do, technically, is use the taunt button in order to increase your damage output, and then just one-shot them. But the problem with this is actually that you would not get the required A rank. You would only get a B or C rank instead, 
which probably is because you don't get enough combo points or combo to total. I'm not entirely sure. Also, I just uh, spit at the balloon in the background with some bubble gum. Oops. It's pretty difficult. So for some reason, whenever you try to do a quick charge attack after running, um, you actually tend to face to the left most of the time. So it's kind of difficult to charge up and then charge attack to the right immediately after. So what I want to do here is I want to stay far enough away from the doggies for them to charge because they have to stand a certain distance away from you in order to notice you and then start charging. The two doggies will never charge at the same time. However, once the first doggy charges, the second one will immediately go start going into position to start charging. I try to position them to the uh, far right of the screen so I can immediately go on further. Now we introduced the, this kind of mechanic where you just hook onto the tongue rings. Spit the balloon, don't forget that because that unlocks one of the crystal things in the end. And let's see, where are we in my notes? I made notes for this because... One of the biggest difficulties for speedrunning is getting like familiar with the game, like knowing all the spawns. So the reason why I think you can improve this run by 10-15 minutes is because if you just learn where the enemies exactly spawn, you can position yourself to knock them out pretty much right away and immediately in order to, uh, well, come with them more efficiently, group them up more effectively, etc. In a lot of these cases, I'm still not entirely sure where the enemies spawn, with the exception of a few, like, encounters. So you see me just kind of uh, awkwardly position myself here. Also, I just used the bubblegum spit there. So because these guys are electrifying themselves, uh, you cannot immediately charge into them if you let them. Optimally, you don't let them electrify themselves. Also, I'm hesitating here a little bit, because it takes me a while to... <laughs> find where I am in my notes. I have written down all the puzzle solutions. In this case, it would have been faster for me to just, like, resolve the puzzle, because it's really not difficult. Uh, but yeah. So here, I'm actually punching enemies, because I need to get the combo counter high enough in order to get a higher rank. If I didn't do at least one punch, I would not be able to get the combo counter high enough in this one. Well, the previous one. Also, these flies you see flying around, um, you want to, you could absorb them in order to regain health, but in hard mode they are barely worth anything, and you basically are too shot by the enemies anyway, so it's not that useful. And in easy mode you never really take enough damage for that to be irrelevant either. I've never played normal mode yet. Also, we need to backtrack here in order to spit at this ghost after spitting it on the right side in order to get another piece here. I don't know whether there's a faster solution to this, but this is just a solution I found. Alrighty, uh, these little puzzles here. You want to... I think I've just made a mistake there. Yeah, I made a mistake. One too many times I activated. So basically how this works, the spark goes uh, across whenever it gets the chance to go across up. If it goes down, it needs to go to the side at the next opportunity. But it can also only go through a certain current. When it's red, it's only going down. When it's blue, it only goes up. So it's kind of rather intuitive, I suppose. This is a relatively small arena to dodge these doggies in, but you have actually a lot more space than it initially looks like. And I almost messed up the second charge attack there. If the dogs recover, you need to wait for them to do another jump attack. And that is quite slow. So I was trying to tongue over to that ring. So here's one thing. Unfortunately, there is no individual uh, keybinds for... Also, I accidentally switched to Brock here. I did not mean to do that. And I switched over to... So here's... I couldn't immediately switch back to Pimple because there's a bit of a delay until you can switch back. And I decided to switch over to Rash because he deals more damage than Zitz. So I was hoping to one-shot these guys, despite not having Pimple, but that didn't quite work out. So another little time loss there. I feel like I was talking about something. Oh yeah, Tongue. There's three different uh, ways of using Tongue. One is to Tongue an enemy. That is a separate button compared to Tongue in... Um, onto one of these hook thingies. And there's a separate button in order to Tongue onto... Um... 
tongue basically like crystals in the environment. So this is a encounter where I have to start punching enemies because if I just dash attack all of them, I will actually not be able to get enough combo points. Plus I did get hit. When you get hit, you actually lose your combo. And I actually ended up just kind of hitting enemies a lot more than I probably needed. Because I was just worried. Also, <laughs> one of these guys just spawned really late because I think I uh, killed his replacement spawn pretty late. These are all things that you would just kind of learn and start to optimize where they spawn, which ones to go for first, etc. And here we have a little hacking minigame. Uh, basically, if you stand on these plus thingies, the corresponding plus blocks are going to be slowed down. So that was the Brawl stage number two, immediately after we have Brawl stage number three. Cicadas. Because I don't really have anything else to say in the meantime. By the way, I probably lose a bit of time to load times. I have no idea how much uh, load time there is. Kinda curious. So, um... Here, you have to wait for three ups and downs. Otherwise it doesn't quite work out. I tried for a while. It might be technically possible if you do like pixel perfect movement with just two like up and down movements. But I couldn't do it and for a time like this one where I don't have that much time to practice to complete a run, uh, I felt like it was more reasonable to just go for the safer approach. Consistency is basically key with these types of runs here. And anybody who may know me, I am anything but consistent. I may have a moment of brilliance, but then again, that will usually just offset that with a spur of, hey, that's not so good. So, uh, these ice cone guys, they actually shoot you from across the screen. However, they will not shoot you if you are above them or right on top of them. I try to bubblegum spit them in order to keep them at bay, but I'm having actually a lot of trouble getting this here. Also, I'm now worried that I'm not going to get the required, like, uh, rank if I didn't start punching them because I got hit in between. So these uh, snowball, snow cone, snowball, whatever, throwing guys, shooting guys. But once again, accidental switch. These shooting guys, let me try it again. Um, they take two charge attacks in order to knock them down. What I figured out is that you could just do a regular punch and then charge attack in order to uh, knock them out. However, unfortunately, I'm not practiced enough to do that, but I'm pretty sure it would be faster if you were to knock them out with a punch and then charge attack. This is another one of these cases where I'm pretty sure if you knew where exactly where the enemies spawn as soon as you get into the area, you wouldn't have to worry about, um, well, these encounters here. Also, this is probably one of my weaker encounters here. Um, sometimes you see me use that gorilla uppercut. That is relatively slow, but um, one thing I haven't quite mentioned about enemies yet is enemies. Um, was I was really worried I wouldn't get the S or A or S rank. Enemies need to get hit by a finishing blow in order to get knocked uh, out and off screen. A finishing blow is the third one, for pimple anyways, is the third one of the uh, regular attack pattern. A charge attack with the train here, or the gorilla uppercut. I think there might even be uh, some aerial attacks that work too, but I pretty much never use those currently, I guess. Either way, this is kind of the requirement in order to knock out little enemies, in order to get, actually finish them off, so to speak. In this little minigame, I actually waited a little... Good job. Uh, I waited a little bit longer than absolutely necessary just because I wanted to make sure I would be able to get through. I actually waited like 3-4 seconds longer than necessary. This is kind of the thing, whenever you do a speedrun like this and you start to learn and figure out how the games work, it is just, oh yeah, I could do this better. Oh, I guess this wasn't that good. Like, I was pretty happy with getting this run done, and I think it's a pretty good run for, um, having basically three days. But there's so many things that could still get improved too. 
Like for example here, I didn't realize that I needed to walk down right on the next junction. All these little things just add up to a lot of time. So here I actually oh, got hit and so I start actually punching enemies because I'm worried I will not get the required rank anymore. Because punching does not finish the enemies off immediately. So when they have these purple skulls over their heads... Oof, that's actually pretty bad. I have no idea how I got this one here then. If the enemies have the purple skulls over their head, that is when you need to use a finishing move in order to finish them off. Okay, I got the A rank. Pretty poor A rank, honestly, but at that point I was just happy to <laughs> get the rank and just uh, get to the next section of the game since I've been doing a few res resets already. This is one of the more difficult sections here. You cannot immediately uh, charge attack all of them, I don't think. You have to co build up the combo a little bit, which is why, uh, why I'm not immediately finishing them off with charge attacks. And here we got it. I'm actually not sure what the S rank requirements are. Sometimes you jump from a C rank to an S rank, and I really don't know how it is exactly works. But that's also all these little things that you would just figure out if you investigate and play the game a bunch more. So there is uh, four of these ice cream, uh, cream going... Eh, snowball guys. The p important part is for me to just finish off one side because that will allow me to um, not have to worry about the other side because as long as you're on the left side, the left guys will not shoot. But you need to pay attention that you don't get shot by the other guys. Also, I've tried for a while, but I could not actually get through this any faster. It might be possible with a pixel perfect movement, but I couldn't do it. So here I need to punch again. This is the last encounter of this stage here and I basically need to not get hit and also rack up the combo counter a bit higher. That spike attack you see uh, me use there is actually when I do two regular swings or actually one regular swing and then a heavy attack. There's uh, quite a bit of a re variation that you could use but in the more immediate uh, idea. I actually couldn't really figure out a use for a lot of the different moves. It's like a move where you turn into a mummy or a sarcophagus and then a mummy and then you burst forth from it in order to deal damage to enemies. I think they're pretty fun but I couldn't really see a use for them for going fast and that's kind of the entire point here. Alrighty, Rochambeau. To my knowledge, and I might be wrong, I don't know, this is entirely random. And this is actually kind of annoying for speedrun purposes, where what you want to have happen is one of the frogs, it doesn't matter which one, you want one of the frogs to win every single round. It's going to be three wins total, and you don't want to see any tiebreakers, and you don't want to see any draws. Which, well, we got a tiebreaker and a draw. And that's just straight up time loss that I, to my knowledge, we don't really have any control over. That's just a thing that happens. Fortunate, also by the way, um, music instrument beats toaster, or I have no idea. Well, alrighty, moving on. So, this is a boss fight. Um, we were actually informed that there is a soft lock potential and possibility if you knock the battery into the Guardian's eyes too quickly. So that's why you see me delay my attack a fair bit. I have to admit I didn't really do it myself yet. I don't know how tight the timing is to get the soft lock, but on a run where I managed to get past three of the brawl stages without uh, losing any crystals, I wanted to try and well, not do that. So basically, you need to use a finishing move like the third attack in a chain attack. Alternatively, um, the charge attack or the uppercut. Uppercut is just the easiest one to use usually. So, uh, hooking in these green eyes is actually kind of difficult because I'm not entirely sure how the priority system works for which 
uh, enemy you lock on in order to hook on the eyes. But in this next one here, there's going to be three eyes. The first two I get pretty quickly. And then the third one, there's these little red eyes that are just um, around. And I, I have no idea why I didn't hook the green eye up there. So from previous experience, it's better for me to just knock these eyes out in order to charge act. Or, well, try to get this. But I still lose a bunch of time because I fiddle around a bit too much. Once again, once you're more consistent and have more of an idea on how these things work, you would probably save a few seconds here. So that's nice. Lots of improvement potential here. Boom! Battery to the nose! Get by. In case you're curious, if you use the taunt and then smash the battery into the guy, it doesn't deal more damage. I tried that. Would have been kind of funny if that actually would end up dealing more damage. Also, in the bottom right you see I need to hold the end button in order to skip these cutscenes. And I <laughs> I have not memorized this game to the extent where I just go, oh shoot, cutscene, and I hit the end button. Which probably is only like a second or so every time as well. Well, not every time, but usually. So here we have Rochambeau. The Dark Queen will always lose no matter what you do. So this is just kind of more for fun. I don't understand why uh, the Dark Queen is now suddenly part of our team. Maybe try out Xbox Game Pass and try out the game because that's currently a thing. Wow, segways. <laughs> uh, yeah. Basically what Xbox Game Pass is, I think somebody in my chat made a good comparison. It's basically like Netflix but for games. You buy a Game Pass and then you have all these amazing games as a selection that you can just play for a while. You don't technically own them, you can buy them separately through Xbox uh, Game Pass for PC as well. Actually, is that, the, is that the name of the thing? What is the name? Xbox... It's just called Xbox app on my laptop. Not sure. Speaking of which, I'm playing on a laptop. It's a good laptop, it's a gamer laptop, but... I can clearly see that I'm probably losing a bunch of time to loading times. And you know what? Sometimes that happens. You want to wait a little bit before... So there's actually a slightly faster method of clearing that specific hacker thingy. But I have to admit I forgot how it works. And I just went with whatever worked. <laughs> so this, by the way, is the brawl stage that gave me the most trouble. This is the last of the brawl stages. Thus it's further in the game, thus it is more difficult than the other ones. It makes sense. But a lot of these, you actually have to do a bunch of punching before you can just charge into enemies in order to knock them out. And a lot of these enemies actually attack significantly faster than previously. So these weird... Uh, Orange thing is in kilts or whatever. Uh, they are healers. They don't actually attack you directly. And if you get too close to them, they teleport away. So you actually want to use a charge attack from relatively far away in order to knock them out and not get too close to them. Which is easier said than done when you're just uh, charging and then cancelling with a dash all the time. Okay. Um, what else do we have? Oh yeah, these uh, axe throwing guys. So, here, I think in this encounter, I have to punch them a few times in order to get the high enough uh, counter, but I th I'm actually not sure. It might actually be sufficient to just go ahead without doing any punches in order to uh, just uh, kill all of these guys without like doing regular punches, just charge attack. All of these enemies did, uh, are knocked out in one charge attack right away. And also, by the way, you're spitting at bird nest in the begin uh, background. I'm not sure why. Kind of mean. But yeah, um, these axe thrower guys are basically the bane of my existence. Also, another accidental switch. That's the third one. Wow. Because they throw their axe pretty fast, and they aim exactly at your position. And unlike the previous enemies that are using ranged attacks, all of them more or less can throw at the same time, from what I can tell. But these blue guys here, um, they actually take two charge attacks if you don't punch them first. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to uh, punch them just once and then charge attack into them. 
but that's easier said than done. Like for the example, I just messed it up on this guy. That's all right. Uh, what else? I think I messed up the first one here. Yeah, I need it. Oh no, this is fine. Never mind. I didn't mess up that much, I guess. I don't feel like I need to explain the puzzles. I feel like they are relatively self-explanatory. So here you actually have to punch these guys at least once, I think. Otherwise you don't get the uh, better rank. Also here, you want to hit the right gauge three times and the left one only once. I had no idea that you hit could hit the left gauge multiple times until recently because I just, it just automatically always happened to be the correct way. And here is where I of course must sit up. That's alright. Also by the way, uh, the other frogs actually do have fast animations for activating these panels here. So that might actually be another way to um, optimize the speedrun if you know how to use the other frogs more quickly. Again, kind of a little bit lost on what to do next because I haven't memorized the levels yet too well. And forgetting that there's going to be more enemies as well. All of these little things are just adding up to minutes in the end. But hey, I'm just very critical of myself. <laughs> That's just the nature of things. You can hook that uh, crystal, pyramid, it's kind of like a double pyramid, I don't know. You have to uh, punch a, a few of these enemies here. Also, I think I just got, yeah, I just got hit. So I was a little bit afraid that I wouldn't get uh, a proper rank. But I ended up just going for it and got an S rank. Yeah, that kind of worked out. Here, um, all of these encounters with the X guys in my notes I've written, I have to punch enemies in order to get the appropriate rank. However, I think that is largely a product of in my, when I did testing, I got hit and I didn't realize how much of an impact getting hit would have uh, for your rank. So I think if you just don't get hit, a lot of these encounters where I'm starting to punch, you don't actually have to punch at all. Also, just another puzzle. <laughs> And this is the last encounter. So, this is what gave me basically nightmares. In my previous two runs, I failed to get the A rank or better in this one here, because the enemies were just really mean. And eventually I figured out, after doing basically one test run of this, what I want to do is I want to get rid of the axe guys immediately. The most important part is not getting hit. And that's kind of how I ended up playing this. And it worked out pretty well. It's not the fastest, I don't think, but... I was pretty happy to get past this stage, to be honest. Um, I like bra Brawlers, just casually. They're kind of fun. But speedrunning them, I've never done before. I've never optimized a Brawler. And maybe I should have consulted some runners that are more used to these, like Murphigator, or I think Clayton and PJ as well. I'm not entirely sure. So what else do we have? Um, that was stumped. Oh yeah, uh, next up we have... I don't know, so I accidentally activated a thing on the splits that abbreviates the splits. Oh yeah, the X guy. So. A few important things to note about this guy. Uh, when he is in the background, it's just a set amount of time until he comes back to the front where you can hit him. And important here is actually to finish this guy here specifically with zits. The reason why we want to have sits at the end is because that actually determines which character you play in the platforming stages. So thanks to... I asked that in the Battletoads Discord and who was it? True Polsky, thank you so much for answering the question. Uh, I wasn't entirely sure what determines which uh, toad you get. 
My best shot uh, would have been to just go back to the title screen if I didn't get the correct one. Otherwise, in order to, well, get the correct character. I say correct character because it does make a difference. However, I've actually only tested two of the three. And the second one was so good that it was like, well, I'm just gonna stick with this one. Either way, um, yeah, you just touch circles on this one. Also, I feel like the boss deals so little damage that you could literally just stand the entire time. Oh, fun fact, you uh, soft lock if you hold the charge attack while you're supposed to run into the area here. Also here I use a taunt in order to deal more damage. What you could technically do if you're really good, um, you could hit this guy into his next phase before um, he finishes his jumps and gets his stuck, axe stuck in the ground. But you need to get, get both lucky uh, so that he doesn't jump too far away. You know, I say lucky, now that I think about it, maybe that's a pattern on how he jumps on jumps around with his axe. I actually have no idea, to be honest. <laughs> Once again, more things to investigate at some point, maybe. Either way, you want to use a taunt when he jumps over in order to increase your damage briefly, and then you want to... Uh, just punch him while he is down there. You have a very brief window of opportunity, but you can effectively just get two attacks and you might be able to get more. But here I basically knocked him back into the background to half health before he even got the opportunity. Also, I just noticed he actually has slightly less than half health. I wonder whether that has something to do with him being invulnerable in one of the next X down sections. So in hard mode, uh, you take two hits, your frog is out. For a long time. In this mode, I'm pretty sure you could just sit in position with the frog the entire time and you would be fine. You will probably switch frogs once or twice until he comes front to the front of the axe. Kinda funny actually. I did really enjoy the boss fights in hard mode, honestly, because they are actually difficult. So here, I actually cannot hit this guy. I think this might be a product of him having slightly less than half health, and he is still invulnerable for whatever reason. But yeah, I can just not hit him until he sticks his axe in the ground. Also, one thing, I actually did not realize this until literally today, that if you get hit by... Uh, a lot of attacks, you can actually charge out of the knockback in order to recover. I did not realize that until very, very recently. Also here again, I switch over to Zitz intentionally just to um, finish him with Zitz, so I will be the correct character in the platforming section. Uh, I did not realize that you could actually dash out of a charge attack until recently, because when you play in hard mode, the second hit you take usually just knocks out your toad, and that's kind of the end of the song. You cannot exactly recover from getting knocked out like that. However, in easy mode, eventually I just ended up just kind of mashing the buttons, and suddenly I was, well, recovering. And I could have probably implemented that a lot better and a lot more, but I didn't really build any muscle memory for it since I didn't realize that's a thing. So here you just shoot the targets. That's it. If you want to rack up points in this minigame, you want to wait until multiple targets arrive. So if you hold the button down, you charge up a shot and it will go through the targets, through all of them. The more targets you hit with one shot, uh, the more points you get. In this case, I'm just like, uh, I'm just gonna relax after actually a pretty decent boss fight against the axe guy. I was actually decently happy with knocking him over to the certain patterns. It wasn't optimal, you could probably still gain like 10 or 15 seconds if you're really good at it. But yeah. Here I actually dropped one of the balls, spheres, lasers. They looked like ceramics to me. Either way, um, the idea is you just don't drop them. Uh, worth noting, it is to my knowledge entirely random whether you get quick ceramic balls uh, throws or not. And getting more quick ones is actually a lot more beneficial. 
because these are getting out of the right screen quicker and new ones spawn quicker as well. And you just need to get a uh, lead a few through there. So here I actually ended up just deliberately going off balance at the beginning. I actually am not entirely sure whether this affects how high you jump. But because on easy mode you only need to uh, have four out of... Basically need to just complete four figures. That's it. In order to pass. In hard mode it is eight and... Took me a few tries to get this done in my casual playthrough because I wasn't also entirely sure what was happening. But yeah. I just realized it is actually being covered by the game pass in the bottom. There's basically a counter, just one out of three, or one out of four, two out of four, etc. Just skip, skip some more cutscenes. Once again, if you'd like to see the silliness, maybe check out Game Pass. <laughs> I like the cutscenes actually. I do wish some of more of them would be skippable though, because. While I do appreciate a bit of a break in the run where I get a bit of a breather and prepare it, I can prepare for the next portion, uh, it does actually start to just kind of go and, well, alright, I've heard this now for the 20th time. And I'll start spacing out instead of preparing for the next portion. So this is another auto scroller. The best you can do is not fail, I think. There may be some speed techniques to like hop on slopes in order to not get slowed down. I have no idea whether that's a thing. That's just kind of me throwing out ideas, but that would need to be tested. Either way, the basic idea is uh, you hold down a button, in my case 4, 5 or 6 on my numpad, which 4 makes your bobsled stick to ice platforms. If you hold down 5, it sticks to sponge platforms. If you hold down 6, it holds down, uh, attaches itself to carpet platforms. Um, if you attach very late, you actually get extra bonus points, if you'd like to go for a point run, or score run for that matter. But in this case, I just mainly care about getting through. Fun fact, my previous personal best actually didn't have tutorials disabled, which meant in certain sections I had to clear a prompt in order to, well, get through the tutorials. Uh, that cost me like half a minute. So yeah, um... That's kind of all there is to this. You want to take certain paths in order to collect the uh, collectibles around here, but I feel like that's going to be relatively obvious. Uh, the third and fourth collectible are actually kind of tricky to get onto the correct path, and I think I got them first try in this one. So yeah. I'm actually going to go ahead and grab some more water real quick, so I'm going to be right back and I'm actually going to leave you with uh, Paul's Jackamoth just kind of coming out to the music, because the music here is pretty good. Be right back. Alrighty, I'm back. 
Oh yeah, consistency is indeed a thing that I'm lacking. I'm more of a runner that figures out strategies and little tricks rather than actually grinding out and getting good at runs. But hey, I'm actually pretty happy with this one overall. So, um, anything else? Oh yeah, don't run into these frogs, they actually do hurt you. Maybe overall in terms of speed running. One of the difficulties why it was actually really difficult to get a speed run completed within three days is... Actually, there's multiple reasons. Uh, one is it's a new game, so a lot of people... There's very little evidence and things that we know about the game from other people playing, casual people just encountering interesting things, or maybe people just going for school runs and optimizing. Essentially, there was just like nothing before us, in a sense. And we kind of needed to just play the game, get used to the game, um, figure out how it works, how the mechanics work, and try your best to complete a run. And I'd have to say that is a pretty difficult task. And one of the interesting things to me is the speedrunning scene is not usually a competition for like you want to have the best run right now. More often than not, there's just like different categories of people. Uh, there's people that just grind out runs that are just effectively, they want to get the best times, they want to get records. Um, there's also people that go for figuring out strategies, figuring out all these little tricks, maybe glitch finders that figure out how the mechanics works of the game and go into real big depth on figuring out, okay, you want to do a punch dash and not a dash punch because that is like a quarter of a second faster in these sections here. These kinds of things. That's more my category usually. And speedrunning is more of a community thing. It is not actually one speedrunner against the next one against the next one. Not usually anyways. Outside of, I guess, this competition maybe? Either way, usually it is more of a case of a community effort to push the game's t at time of the game down as far as possible. Somebody figures out a little trick that they can use here, um, somebody else figures out another trick here, etc. Also, by the way, in case you're curious about the mouse cursor, I'm using the mouse in order to play the game. I had no idea that the mouse cursor was being captured by OBS rather than the in-game cursor. So that's pretty interesting. Oh, it's actually an in-game cursor. Huh. So, um, little thing, uh, Fasinez told me that, that if you kill the enemies here in this first section here too quickly, um, the first yellow crystal thing is not going to spawn. And I actually had that happen in my previous run before this one. Basically the splits my current run is comparing against. So these ones here, specifically these little flyers, you don't want to knock them out too, too quickly. Like I'm being really careful here, there we go. To not uh, like kill them too quickly because I've had that happen before. And pretty much for the rest of the sections, to my knowledge, there's not exactly much of a way. Collecting these power-ups gives you different types of shots. I don't actually know whether they deal any more damage, even close range. Probably. <laughs> Again, these are the kind of the things that you would need to figure out, time out, and check out whether these are even a thing. The important part about uh, these flying sections are to knock out the enemies as quick as possible, because usually the last enemy on the screen you see, um, you want to go ahead and knock them out as quick as possible, because that advances you to the next section. It's not exactly a flying thing. Also here, I stand perfectly still. This is not be just because it's easy mode and I don't need to dodge stuff. This is also because your ship needs to go into the appropriate position in order to be ready for the cutscene. The cutscene doesn't start until the ship is in position. So the p ship position I need to be in happens to be exactly where I started the battle, so I decided to just stay there. On that note, I actually made a mistake where I didn't stand in the appropriate position before the first cutscene started for the mini boss battle there. And I actually lost a bunch of time because the ship manually had, or well, in the cutscene had to go into the appropriate position. So yeah, there's that. I also, you see me just kind of crash into these enemies. 
because here's the thing you only get so many shots so i deliberately actually take damage by standing on top of the ships because that will allow me to uh crash into these little ships here's another case where i should have stayed in the bottom center but this is also another case where i just haven't memorized the game properly yet so i don't exactly know when this next cutscene would start so it would be better if i were just close to the bottom center so the cutscene could start quicker here in this case too in this case i do know that i will need to be basically in the center in order for the next ending cutscene to start so that's easier to figure out oh yeah uh the little enemy ships thing is the little enemies basically if you crash into them they get knocked out and you take a point of damage if you just like ram them so to speak and that's actually kind of useful because you only have so many projectiles to shoot at enemies so that's that Alrighty, righty on to the first platforming section this is the reason why we had sits at the end of the x-man fight i have to admit i forget what his name was but oh well the reason is we now are this little red dude his name is OWTH. Not entirely sure what that's about. I'm not entirely sure what he is, but I can tell you the reason why I want to play as this little guy is because he has a significantly smaller hitbox than Pimple. I have to admit, I don't know whether there's any other difference whatsoever. It's just, it is guaranteed a smaller hitbox, which means I can squeeze by things faster. Also here, we have to pull the box all the way to the left and no we cannot reload from last checkpoint after collecting this thing in order to reset the thing it will not save your crystals you have to go around these are checkpoints so if you like get knocked out that is where you restart so uh there's basically one main uh, form of movement technique that is the roll uh, when you roll and go decently fast you can jump in order to keep the momentum of the roll so that is kind of what i'm trying to do here once again i'm repeating myself like a parrot because i haven't memorized all the stages yet i do silly mistake like this one where i just fall down by accident also i forget that uh, crystal was in a little bit of a copy there so yeah all of things that just add up either way so basically pimple is just clearly larger and i have a proof of that in case you're curious about it that will come up in the third platforming section but yeah basically roll jump in order to keep the momentum because if you just roll out on the floor you actually are slower so um, I think there's a faster method of solving this next section here. That is, if you go up and around to the right hand side and lower the elevator and then go and collect the additional crystal, I think that would be faster. However, I decided against that because you would need to do a pretty precise jump across a gap in order to make that. In my previous run, I didn't, I failed that like twice or three times. So I decided to not go for it here. Because, once again, I don't even know whether it's faster, I just think it is. Either way, to illustrate what I mean with this is, here on the left upside, this platform here, from here to here, you can actually jump. Without having to elevate the elevator previously. But yeah, it's very precise. You can ac you actually have quite a bit of coyote time, as in you walk off a platform and you can still jump as if you were on the floor. It's very, very lean in this game. It's kind of nice. I have no idea why I jumped up there. Just not necessary, really. <laughs> but yeah, um, in hard mode, you do have no leeway. One hit, you're done. Back to the previous checkpoint. That's pretty brutal. Next up here, um, you actually cannot do a roll jump onto that log over there. You have to do a regular jump. Roll jumps are very slightly lower than the log jumps, and that's actually pretty awkward in a lot of cases where it just doesn't work quite out if you do a roll jump. You have to do a regular jump. Like here too, you have to do a regular jump in order to get up there. It doesn't work with a roll jump. 
grab the last crystal. Here I wanted to land on the ledge and then jump to the right side. Didn't quite make it. Got a decent recovery. Oh well. And that's the first platforming section. Also, worth noting, the special condition for platforming sections is you need to clear them under a certain specified time limit. And that's actually pretty difficult. For the first two, it's not too bad. If you like, it's difficult in order to do that while collecting all the other crystals. By itself, it's probably not that bad. And what you can do technically is you can just do two loops. You can go ahead and collect the crystal in one run and then just do the quick run on the next one and it will actually add up the crystals separately. Also you can see me here crash or deliberately bonk into these uh, little yellow ships because that will allow me to knock them out in one go without having to shoot them first. Also, I'm not entirely sure why I picked up that shot. I think it is stronger. Hard to tell, really. Doesn't seem to deal much more damage if it does. These power-ups are timed, if I'm not mistaken, rather than based on how many shots you have. Not sure. <laughs> Again, lots to investigate. Where was I? Oh yeah, uh, the platforming sections. Bonk. Effectively, platforming sections are difficult if you try to get the crystals and the time limit at the same time. The first two are fine, the last one is really rough. Also there, my mouse was actually at the bottom of the table and I couldn't drag it further down, so that's why I couldn't shoot straight to the right. Bit silly. Alrighty. Going up close and personal, so all three shots hit the enemies here. I actually don't know whether you deal full damage with all three shots, if all three shots hit the same target. Or maybe it's reduced damage, I really don't know. Bonk. These lasers here are pretty strong, I think. Again, hard to tell. I feel like they're stronger than the regular shots. But I'm not sure it's worthwhile to go out of the way for them. Also, I try pos here's one little thing I do too. I do try to position my ship behind... Basically, when I shoot an enemy, I want to stand in a line where I, if I finish off one enemy, I immediately shoot the next one enemy behind it, if there is an enemy behind it. That's kind of what I try to do there, in a lot of cases. Like, I sh shoot the enemy further away, bonk into that one that is closer by, and yeah. I'm pretty sure you could optimize this by quite a bit, especially if you were better at aiming. Aiming is kind of one of my weak points, I would say. Also, I try to stand there in the center for the cutscene to start quicker, which I actually managed to do. Mildly surprised that it worked out. Okie dokie, next. No, I just realized I don't know whether this is recording or not. Uh, I'm actually going to briefly see whether this is a crony. You will probably hear an echo, but I'm just getting paranoid here. Give me just one moment. I'll comment about this here in just a second. Actually, I can't do that until I stop and start the recording. Well, I hope it's recording. <laughs> Otherwise, this is going to be real awkward because I'll have to do it again. <laughs> and it's 3.47 a.m. Alrighty, uh, let's see. What do we have to say here? Oh yeah, uh, this first crystal here, I actually missed in my, one of my previous runs right down here. You want to hold down and jump at the same time. While you hold down and jump, you actually uh, fall through all the platforms. Um... I held down a little bit too long and fell into the spikes. If you fall into spikes, you actually get teleported back to the last safe um, platform area, so to speak. It's the same if you fall into the void. Like, all these little holes here, they are just... Like, you would get a respawn. So it's important to not fall into these, because that's pretty much exclusively a time loss. I'm going to get hit a few times by these. 
But sometimes it also doesn't matter because another thing that we would need to investigate is I don't know how the platform cycles work in this game. Maybe the platforms load in when you reach a certain point. But this platform here, in the previous run I actually managed to perfectly just catch it and ride it up. Here I had to pretty much wait the longest possible time. And the platforms also don't seem to synchronize up properly either. Like they seem to be on a completely different cycle at times. And I'm really not sure what dictates that. Either way, I try to go as fast as possible hoping that the platforms line up basically. And here I just didn't quite manage to get that one either. By the way, this little red guy does make some funky sounds once in a while. When you land, for example, he sometimes squeaks and it's kind of adorable. Alright, let's keep rolling and jumping and rolling and rolling and rolling. Uh, you can make this jump all the way to the right side here in one go. There's another part later where that's similar. And here, don't jump too early. Actually, didn't jump too early. It's actually very tempting to jump too early in that section there. And you just keep going. And here, I actually had to bonk into that spike in order to not go down to the next platform too quick. And here again, if I didn't bonk into the spike, I would have... Well, hit the spikes at the bottom, and that would have reset me back to a previous platform. And here, I made that mistake again, a third time. This time, it's I'm not quite as lucky. So that's really silly. You just want to be patient. Because I was wait going to wait for this platform cycle here anyways. There was not much of a reason to rush. Again, speaking about this is just part of lots of things to memorize. And also here, the better part would have been to just try to aim for that rightmost like purple platform rather than try to go all the way to the right which well i know now but hey bonking into the spike there really didn't matter however getting knocked in down in these spikes kind of mattered because that did reset me back quite a far amount here you wanna just more or less blind navigate through this area here I only have one health left, which means the next hit will knock me out. I actually waited there a little bit until this camera scroll turned, since, again, I hadn't quite memorized all the uh, locations of the spikes yet. But also, on top of that, um, I have to wait for the platform usually anyways, so most of the time I wouldn't lose time if I just wait. I still don't have more health, so I'm just taking this a bit more careful. And here, by the way, I'm pretty sure Pimple would have hit his head on the spike up there. But the little guy is just smaller. So that's better. Smaller is better. Sure. Um, here, you actually have to use roll jumps in order to make across the gap. That's actually part of the gameplay requirement. So if you did not know about roll jumps until now, well, now you do. Because they're required right there. I think that's the only section where they are required, though. Okay, and that is the second platforming section complete. Third one is following up right afterwards here. Check something real quick. And... Okay. Microphone goes all to the things. Yeah, it should, in theory, record my... microphone audio here. That's a theory. We'll see. Hopefully. Alrighty, so this is the difficult one. You have seven minutes to complete this entire trial and collect all the crystals on top of it. Um, my current best when I did that was seven, uh, six minutes and three seconds, so you do have a decent amount of leeway. But when I initially tried this, without specifically practicing this level, this is the one level I actually put a fair bit of practice into. Everything else was just general routing and figuring out stuff. This is the one level I spent a fair bit of uh, time practicing, and there's still a lot of little mistakes, obviously. But um, as long as I just get this in one go without having to redo the level, I'm happy. And as you might be able to tell by this being my current uploaded run, well, 
that actually did end up working out. Spoilers. So you can actually roll jump pretty late off of platforms if you time it well. Also here I can just roll below this thing. Pretty sure once again Pimple would have gotten hit on the head if I had him selected. Not sure about the blue lady. I have never even tried the blue lady. Here you can just hold right and you will automatically get onto the hay wall and then you can just keep ch uh, jumping and rolling. Works out pretty well. And here we get to the puzzles. Another part where it's like, well, I just do what I think is most optimal. So I go for the right side first. Obviously, hitting the spike is not optimal. But right side first, I think, is more optimal than going up here and hitting that elevator button first. But I don't really know. It's just kind of, you travel more distance with your little guy. But since you have to wait for the rock on the right side to lower itself anyways, that might actually make up for it. I don't know. Whoops, another dive into the spikes. But I have plenty of time. It's just not a particularly great one. Here's a damage boost. You cannot do that in hard mode because you would just get knocked out. You have to wait on the little elevator. Getting up. You can directly jump onto that hay wall. I only just, like, literally the run before this figured that one out. And yeah. Also, I lowered the elevator here in order to come back around in order to capture it. I think that's faster. Again, don't know. <laughs> you can land on the left side high ball and just go a little bit faster if the cycles with the stuff and skulls and such lines up. Kind of hard to tell. Maybe. Probably. Worth noting, you can only hit these elevator buttons when the button is green. You can interact with it before that already, but the button doesn't activate until the thing is green. Or, yeah. That's just how it is. Push this box to the right here. Push this over all the way to the next platform. Hit this thing. By the way, if you jump into the ceiling spike there, up there, you get knocked out in one hit, even in easy mode. So that's why I kind of took a little bit of a more safe approach and not bonk my head into the spike wall up there. So, by the way, you have to kind of wait for this platform cycle pretty often anyway, so as long as you're not too slow, it'll be fine. How slow that is, I have no idea. Also here, it's the only little skip that I've found. Here you can roll to the right, and pretty sure this is not possible with Pimple. <laughs> also, I already lost more time than the skip saves because I accidentally fell down. Like this thing. Oops, and fell into the spikes. Good job. Pull this box over, push this box to the... Oh, you should have poked... Oh well. Should I have pushed that box to the left? I think that would have been slightly faster. Maybe not, because we have to wait for the elevator. Who knows? Hard to tell. Either way, just missed the cycle, so... Either the spike drop or dropping all the way to the right side kind of hurt me here. So, and now, this is where kind of where you can either go left or right after activating this thing here. Both just kind of pose different challenges. You have to do both anyways. I decide to go to the left first because you scroll all the way down from that side. And the camera takes a while to catch up. So I just try to do a jump to the left side. Sometimes I catch a really good platform cycle if I manage to go all the way. Sometimes it doesn't matter like it did here. I'm just waiting until the thing goes up. Move this box a little bit further than absolutely necessary because that allows me to squeeze into the left side quicker without having to stand on the box waiting until the, uh, well, stone goes out of the way. Also here, I don't know what's faster, whether it's collecting this thing right away or whether it's jumping from the box. Not sure. Can make it up there. That was actually a pretty good platform cycle overall. Also here, you have to push the boxes onto the switch. However, you can just squeeze by with this little guy stra chopping straight down there. I thought that was kind of funny. Doesn't really save any time. If you go to the... Well, I guess it does save a bit of time. You get to the side quicker. Hmm. Maybe what you should do is go right side first to take advantage of that. 
Also here, I don't know whether it's faster to take the elevator up first in order to get up there to the platform, but then you have to load the elevator again as well. I don't know. Have to push to the right uh, boxes right here in order to get to this section here. You can technically make it in order to grab this. Also, doesn't matter that I hit the spikes there, I still collected the thing because I didn't lose all lives. So that's perfectly fine. I have to reuse the box on the left side there too. Hit the elevator button, preferably as early as possible, then just keep pushing the box here. This is why I know this little guy has a smaller hitbox. Pimple cannot do this push. He will get hit by that ceiling spike there. Also, you cannot do that little skip that I was able to do on the left side here. Fun fact, you can make that jump without pu uh, pulling the box first, but it's kind of difficult. So I decided to just make it easy. Again, in these kinds of things where we have a limited amount of time to effectively get a run done, consistency is usually more important than trying to go for all the tiny optimizations. Then again, I don't know all the tiny optimizations yet. Speaking of optimizations, shoutouts to Fuzziness, who actually figured out that, hey, you don't have to really duck or jump across the things, because in order to effectively advance this part here, you want to hit these hippies, I guess, or whatever they are, as early as possible, because you advance to the next uh, mini game here as soon as you hit the hippies. Also in hard mode, you can maybe do one, maybe two mistakes if you're really fast on this little punching mini game, but you don't really have more time than that. However, in easy mode, you can just mash the buttons and it's usually gonna be fine. So it's better to just bash buttons rather than not press buttons and try to go fast. So here, um, the spawns may be predetermined. I don't know. You have to photograph eight of these guys in order to advance to the next section here. So this is where the game tells you to duck, but if you don't duck, you can just keep hitting these guys and more of them spawn more quickly, hopefully, so you can hit them. So you advance to the next minigame. So here, you also, these larger stems, you have to hit the button three times in order to knock them out. That is when I actually switch sides in order to, um, well, do the other side. Because until the logs or the trees are close enough to the little red guy, he actually cannot knock them out at all. So you have to effectively switch in order to go left and right because that's just more efficient. Jump? Nope, I'm just hitting enemies. I think I do one duck or one jump somewhere. Yeah, here I do a jump. Because... I wasn't sure whether I would uh, knock out enough enemies quick enough for this to work otherwise. And it kind of largely worked. Shoot to... I think it's 19 the second time? I'm not sure. It might actually be an entirely different trigger. I think it's how much it is. Also, sometimes this little red guy, O-W-T-H, actually, um, floats around. And he has a ginormous hitbox. You, it's very, very easy to accidentally photograph that guy. And if you photograph him, you lose all health, which isn't that big of a deal for Braddy. Or, well, for easy mode specifically. Because, well, you have lives. In hard mode, you don't have any lives. All right, and that's pretty much it. The mini games are kind of, I'd have to say, straightforward. I keep moving my mouse, thinking that oh, I have my mouse cursor on the screen. No, it's actually on the recording. So, more shoot 'em up section. Kind of not a whole lot to say about this one. Aside from if you memorized where the enemies exactly come from, you probably would save like a few seconds in this. Hmm. 
One of my favorite things actually was to try and complete these sections in hard mode. I actually really enjoy bullet hell games and the enemies always spawn from the same position and most of the enemies actually just shoot their pattern. They don't specifically aim for you. There's only the guys that shoot chasing bullets that actually shoots uh, directly for you, but pretty much every other one, I think, you can effectively find a safe spot. These are the ones that shoot uh, chaser bullets. So once again, I position myself behind an enemy in order to shoot through it as soon as it's dead, so I don't have to like flick my mouse around to empty the next enemy. Feels more efficient. All the little boats, the big boats they release, actually do not count towards um, like clearing the screen. So it is most important to just clear the big boats first, and preferably ignore the small ones. I also focus on these line of uh, enemy ships as quick as possible, just because while they fly in, it's the easiest time to actually knock them out. Once they are in, they always follow a, a specific pattern, it is pretty easy to predict, but because they are curving a little bit on the sides up and down, it is way easier to just get them while they are on that side instead. Collected the last crystal here, which also is kind of an indication for me that the stage is soon over, with not having yet memorized the layouts of the enemies, how many more sections there are, etc. So I'm kind of trying to stay towards the center of the screen so the cutscene can start slightly faster right there. So, and this actually gets me to kind of one of my favorite portions of the game. So this is going to be effectively a series of mini-games. In fact, the way this works is there's effectively at the top between those two red brackets. Actually, no, it's higher up. Either way, at the top you see the command sequence. Three, two, one, go. So, basically the command sequence is which minigame corresponds to the sequence you have to actually end up playing. So, the symbols always correspond to the same minigames. So if you're really good, you can actually just glance at the sequence and immediately know which uh, minigame to look for and start completing it. However, there's actually further optimization you can do here. Um, for easy mode, it doesn't really matter if you make any mistakes. You have plenty of time and the penalty is not big. So just mashing buttons in order to try and figure out which a minigame you're currently playing is actually perfectly fine most of the time. Um, and sometimes I'm just also guessing there's only like three minigames left, so I'm just play, uh, clicking the left and right mouse button, and I'm click, uh, clicking the S button on my keyboard in order to try and just figure out as quick as possible which one is the next minigame. I think you can likely get like 20, 30, 40, maybe even a minute if you're really, really good at these mini games here and know where they are. So worth noting, I'm actually playing on keyboard and in the options menu you can set your mouse sensitivity and these sets of mini games are the literal reason why I set my mouse sensitivity to be the lowest possible. Because um, you need to move the mouse for these hexagons on, in order to fit them into the shapes as well as in order to put the temperature gauge with the coffee symbol to the very, very precise exact spot. It's actually pr really, really difficult, and I had to lower the mouse sensitivity all the way down in order to be able to do that. Otherwise, I would just always overshoot it, and it just straight up didn't work. I think on... This is probably one of the advantages of uh, using a gamepad, where you can just tilt your analog stick slightly, but only a very tiny bit. Not sure. Overall, I feel like this is the best I've ever done in these minigames, but again, you just figure out quicker which one a minigame is up, and then just solve this minigame by looking up which is the next minigame and the command sequence. I think that's gonna be fine. Like, some of these are kind of obvious. The second minigame is where the two mouse buttons is just kind of two lines, then the next one and the third one is the maze, and then we have the corner, which I never remember what it is. You just move the mouse up and down on that one. And afterwards is the 
uh, circle, you just push the directions at the correct time. The corner is the coffee corner, which is how I've memorized that one. And then you just fit the shapes into the thing. Fitting the shapes into the hexagons is actually kind of slow. I'm really slow at that. And it's probably one of the slower minigames for me personally. I don't know if it's actually slow though. And that's that. We finished it in 3 minutes and 13 seconds. In game time, that is. And we're actually already getting to the final act here. So, um, if you'd like to figure out how the Dark Queen ends up in the stomach of one of these guys, well, you will have to either watch a casual playthrough or just buy the game yourself. Once again, this is sponsored by Xbox Game Pass for PC. Kind of like, uh, like Netflix, basically you get access to a lot of different games for just a monthly subscription. And your first month is $1 as the banner at the bottom right indicates. So thank you so much for the sponsor opportunity. There is going to be the new Halo coming up on that as well as um, Wasteland 3, they're called. Not sure. Alrighty, so these sections here, you get a dash which bonks into these green goo thingies. In order to advance, you pretty much have to dash into all the green goos in order to knock them out. The yellow spikes hurt you, but I have five lives, so dashing through them is probably faster. Don't know. You would need to test that. There's little bounce pads with the green goo. They automatically bounce you if you walk across them, so if you don't want to bounce, you have to jump. Also here, you have a parachute. But it's faster to not use the parachute if you know exactly how the spikes align. I don't know how exactly the spikes align, but with five lives, um, or by five health, I guess, it is uh, reasonable enough. Also, you might be wondering, why did you just jump there so weirdly? So what I'm trying to do is, I'm trying to optimize my falling velocity. So I'm actually jumping up in order to have a fall, quicker falling speed down in order to do that, because if I dash off the platform, as you can see, it takes quite a long long time for the little, oh my goodness, <laughs> character to start falling. However, if I jump, it immediately starts gaining falling momentum, and that is probably faster. Also, it's kind of difficult to get around these corners of the platform sometimes. Oh well. That was the, the original Battletoads, where, which had, I think, rather similar sections. Never played it, I probably should sometime. Alrighty, um, I don't know whether you might be able to jump onto these yellow plat- or yellow? Blue platforms while they are after you dash into the thing in order to extend them. As you can see, I'm using the little parachute here because I haven't memorized the layout yet, so I'm bonking more onto spikes than necessary, so I have to be a bit more safe in the end. Yeah, I don't know whether you can immediately jump onto them as soon as you bonk into the green screw. I couldn't uh, get it in like few attempts, so I just stopped trying and tried to practice and optimize the rest of the game rather than gain like a quarter of a second here. Which to be fair, oh, also here, that's the first time I've ever done that by accident, where I accidentally bounced up twice. But easy mode gives you enough time that um, this is not that big of a deal. In hard mode, you would be dead after just bouncing once. That's just how it works. I actually really enjoy hard mode, by the way, in case you couldn't tell, which is why I keep referencing it. I think it's really, really well done. And yeah, just keep going further down. Um, real quick, a personal note. Um, I would like to say thank you to developers for implementing decent uh, keyboard, keybind, and control, because way too often, even in like bigger release titles, like in later games, etc. Um, it is the case that they either don't implement rebindable keybinds or they don't implement them properly. And often I will have to resort to using like uh, auto hotkey or other external programs in order to rebind the keys, if that's even possible. So Thank you very much for actually implementing that properly. Like, it feels like they put a fair bit of thought into this for people that may not have a controller and just want to play on keyboard and mouse or maybe more comfortable with it. Like, they adjusted the minigames to the extent where it's actually quite nice. So that's kind of neat. Lost a bit of time there compared to my previous run, but that's kind of obvious because I <laughs> had quite a few 
hiccups to say the least. But honestly, no major mistakes in this run. So that's kind of nice. So this next section here is what I feel like would require a lot of trial and error figuring out how it exactly works in order to optimize defeating all these enemies quickly. So curious enough, this first set of blue enemies, you can perfect dash in or well, charge dash into them and they get knocked out immediately. The next set of blue enemies actually does not get killed in one charge dash. Well, actually, maybe after these ones. I think these ones did. Never mind. Either way, these ones here, you have to do the taunt in order to one-shot them. But the taunt only lasts five seconds. So yeah, that's less than ideal. So these tornado, when you get caught by them, you need to... Um, mash the corresponding button, in my case it's numpad zero, in order to get out of them. So the tornadoes actually do hurt enemies. I think they deal like half as much damage as Pimple's charge attack, so it will never one-shot an enemy, but it actually racks up quite a bit of damage on a lot of enemies because they happen to usually run into a line. Uh, the little guys with the megaphones on their head, they don't actually walk as far as the blue guys because they are ranged enemies, so it is wise to try and just go for these guys instead of anything else. Also, you see, saw me use the Tongue Lash earlier. What you actually can do in higher difficulties in order to like knock out enemies quick is you can full dash charge into them and cancel it with a Tongue uh, Lash before they fly away too far in order to pull them back and then do another charge attack. It's actually decently quick in order to do that, and that's kind of what we did in hard mode in order to, well, defeat individual enemies quickly. Which, I like hard mode, but... Hard mode 100%, I'm glad, I have, I'm honestly glad we don't have to do hard mode 100%, because hard mode just any percent, I did two runs of that. I'm not pretty happy with how the runs turned out, but it is difficult. If we had like two weeks in order to do hard mode 100%, I think that would be pretty reasonable. But with just three days, uh, that's a bit of a stretch. Some people may be crazy good enough to do that, but I'm... This is my easy mode run, and I'm really happy how it turned out, despite it being certainly improvable. Alrighty, kind of like before, if you go close enough to these sideways barriers, you actually can rack up more points. I think the way it goes is like, it gives you two and a half point, uh, two and a half thousand points, and every time you get closer, there's more points. Also, if anybody knows what that weird blue circle means at the beginning of this um, racetrack section here. Please let me know because it's kind of been bugging me this entire time and I couldn't figure it out. There might be something like you need to complete the game in hard mode with 100%, which I haven't done yet actually. <laughs> in order to get through a warp portal and then go further. I don't know, I could imagine there being something like that. But there's no checkpoints in this section. In easy mode it's easy enough to do this without worrying about it too much. But in hard mode, well... It is like twice as long. And you do not get your frogs back if you lose one. It took me quite a long time to actually managed to do this with like 50% consistency, which is not consistent at all. Either way, we're getting into the final fight. So, this is where Zitz, the quick frog, is going to shine the most here. Because uh, this guy on the left, the yellow... yellow? I guess it's yellow too. Mostly pink yellow guy. Um, he, she, it, they are using little spheres that knock you back and hurt you if you run into them. However, the wind turbine attack of our little hero is actually going to just ignore that. If you were to try to use a charge attack from either Rash or Pimple here, you would actually hit these spheres and get knocked back instead. Like, you get a hit instead of you hitting them. 
you might be able to squeeze in a hit, but it's really not all that necessary because as long as you use this taunt here, this is the taunt which increases his damage, um, he is actually pretty much a one-shot to the next phase. So every time you see those uh, things move, it is starting the next phase. Also here, I actually failed to use the taunt in time with Pimple because I wasn't exactly prepared. So that was a little bit awkward. But yeah, just one shot after uh, using the taunt. Now I use the taunt here. And just two attacks with Pimple. Tag in over to Zitz. Taunt again to power up. It's actually surprisingly efficient here. So you needed to hit that one twice. Um, another little fun fact, there's currently a bug in the game, where, which I actually found to be quite funny. Um, sometimes when I got to this part here, after losing a toad in the racing bike section, just before the ending, uh, they would actually continue just laughing the entire time, because they laugh when you lose a toad in the race bike section. So there's that. Also, I made a bit of a mistake there. And this is basically the last phase to the end. This is also where the knowledge that you can actually dash out of a knockback really comes into play. Alrighty, and this is pretty much the end of the run. I really hope this recorded my voiceover, otherwise it's gonna be a really... Well, it's gonna be 7am by the time I turn... Ah, whatever! Alrighty, so this is just a quick time event here for the end. And this quick time event is basically just mash the buttons appropriately. It is kind of straightforward. I probably lost a second or two to not, well, once again, not having memorized what to do exactly every time. But you just wheel your mouse in a circle, wheel it, move, move. All left and right mouse buttons, and prepare for the next one. And we have Rash here, help hold up the Dark Queen's hands. It's kind of stabilizing her. I actually really like this scene, I thought it was pretty cute. Some more tapping, and... I have to admit, I don't know when the timing ends. Because I just stopped the timer here after we get to this screen. Yay, we've done it. Tadpole difficulty is 78 out of 78 collectibles. Whatever the score may be. And in-game time was 1 hour 20 minutes and 7 seconds. I don't really know what in-game time exactly accounts for. But this is my run. And overall I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And I'm just going to... Well, leave you with that. Once again, this was sponsored by Xbox Game Pass for PC. Uh, if you'd like to have more information about it, make sure to check out the description, uh, which is going to be a link to the Game Pass. There's going to be... Um, a lot of games you will get, like new releases like Wasteland 3 and Halo Infinite Plus. There's a library of over 100 games, uh, great games to play. I haven't checked it out myself, but I'm told it is great, and in fact, it actually looks like this might be a bunch of games that I might be interested in. So yeah, um, sounds like a good deal to me. And once again, thank you for the opportunity, that is me going away, and have a good night. Oh well. I guess I'm still talking. I'm just letting the credits play out here. It really has good music, by the way. A shame that I couldn't separate the audio from the commentary, because my laptop just couldn't handle it. It ended up having encoding overload with OBS, which effectively means that my CPU processing, RAM, whatever it might be, was just not quite strong enough. So yeah, um, I highly recommend you check out the soundtrack, the music, the voice acting. I really like this game. Kinda neat. Or the Dark Queen, Siopan Hewlett? I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, but probably one of my favorite types of voice acting right there. I really like the Dark Queen's voice actor. It's really good.
But yeah, that's me signing off. Have a good night.